Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Myth Busting here in the Myth Busting world. We are going to be doing another round of mini myths but this time we're not doing our usual five. We're going to be doing six today because it just so happens that I have six questions I really want to know the answer to. Now if you've got a question that you want answered and it's not answered in this video or any of the other Myth Busting episodes feel free to leave a comment down below and I will of course check your comments out. Our first myth this episode is to do with hostile mob spawning. We did an episode on this a while ago and many of you asked about the end rod and the shulkers that were added in 1.9 and if hostile mobs could spawn on them. The reason that I didn't test these is because end rods emit light so hostile mobs can't spawn on them and shulkers are an entity and not a block. So in theory they won't be able to spawn on either of these but of course we're going to do the test and find out. The lights are off inside our testing facility. It is bright and illuminated by the light that the end rods emit. And of course, no hostile mobs because they need low light levels to spawn. So no surprises here at all. Hostile mobs can't spawn on the end rods. Now let's try the shulker and maybe there we'll see an interesting result. So for the sight of this and the noise alone, I think this was well and truly worth it. That is just bizarre and hilarious. And now what we're going to do is turn off the lights and I'm going to fly around here and I don't think we're going to see any hostile mob spawns. Nothing so far. Of course I'll do a few laps and see if we get anything but it doesn't look promising. So no hostile mob spawns and of course because these are entities they are blocking the places where hostile mobs could spawn on the obsidian and of course we've got to end this by turning the volume back up. Wow that is crazy. Our second myth is to do with the ender pearl. In 1.9 when you use this it now has a recharge on your hotbar and many of you wanted to know if haste or mining fatigue would affect the recharge time which is what we're going to now go and investigate. So we don't want to teleport anywhere which means we're going to throw our ender pearls down into the void and with this command block we can give ourselves haste. You can see it up there. I think it's haste level 5. Yeah I'm pretty sure it's level 5 so we throw that. That seems quicker than I remember it being. However, if we clear the effect and do a little comparison, seems to me to be about the same speed. And here it is with mining fatigue. Now, you saw my hand move slower there, but look at that. It's the same speed every time. It doesn't affect the cooldown speed of the Ender Pearl. Our third myth is probably going to be my favourite this episode because it involves the Elytra. Many of you wanted to know if colliding with the hay bales would reduce the amount of damage that you take when you collide with a regular wall. So this gives me an amazing excuse to fly through the myth busting world with our Elytra. We'll fly into a wall and then we'll replace that wall with hay bales to fly into it again and see if we take any less damage. And this could be very useful in survival as it might mean that hay bales are going to be great for landing pads. So we have made approaching 100 episodes of this series, but I think we're about to have the most fun we will ever have in Myth Busting. Let's jump off the edge and fly through the sky with our Elytra. Wow, this is amazing. Now, this bit below us is going to be like a runway, and we should see, there it is, the squid test. That bit got burnt down, and we're going to fly through there and splat right into the wall. How on earth did I survive that? One and a half hearts. I did this a moment ago, I hit it a lot slower than that and I died, so interesting first test, now let's replace this all with hay bales and try again. You know what, I could do this test all day long, it is fine by me, but let's dive down and get a lot closer as we approach the squid bit, keeping it on our screen, there we go, that's a very nice height, a little bit lower and lower again, bam, right into the middle of the hay. And you can see they're down to half a heart. I think it's fair to say that this thing isn't going to reduce your collision damage. In our last episode of Mini Myths, we checked out how many of the End City portals could be spawned by killing the End Dragon. The answer was 20, and now many of you have been asking, is there any sort of pattern or correlation to where they'll teleport you to in the End City? So that's what we're going to go and investigate right now. So we are now in a program called MC Edit and we are analysing the world from above. We are in the end dimension and I've slain the end dragon 20 times in this one and I've also marked each of the different portals that appeared in a circle here with a different block. However, the colour of those blocks doesn't really pop out and distinguish themselves but if we zoom out here, what I've done is highlighted them using the chunk highlight tool 
further out here so you can see one down the bottom and going around like this there are in fact 20 of them in total I sort of zoomed in scanned around and there you can see it look a little collection of blocks if we go over like this you'll see that those are the same color as the one just over here and that's the same for each and all of these 20 now you can clearly see that if you were to draw a straight line it basically goes out from the center through that bit and then over to this one so let's say we take one of the ones um, like on on this sort of angle if you were to draw a line from the center it would go all the way over here roughly to around where one of these are um, so they are basically spawning in a circle now this is a great example of how it works though this one right here has gone further away and I think what you'll find is as the game is pathing a line from the center it's going to pick the first little bit of land um, that it can spawn the portal next to and so where there isn't uh, anything directly in the way until around here that's the first place that the portal gets spawned now obviously some digging into the code will reveal if that's true or not uh, based on observations it would certainly appear it's something along those lines but this is very useful information if you want to go exploring the end cities with your friends you could say hey I'm gonna go in this direction use that portal go in the other direction and then we won't be exploring the same area together but there you go it does all correlate to the circle pattern in the middle in 1.9 they added the sweep attack where you could use your sword to attack multiple mobs at once and many of you have been asking if the looting effect and other enchantments would work on these mobs. So let's set up a test and let's see if we can find out. So this is a very simple test with positive results. Let's go over what we're going to do here. We've set up a little area where we're going to drop in some mobs. These mobs have no AI so that they don't move around inside our test chamber. We have a creeper here that's got their health set to 1. We have a skeleton on this side also with a health of 1 and a skeleton on that side as well. Now the key here is our sword because we have a looting enchantment at level 100 as well as in breaking. And this is basically to show... Um, that it definitely works so if we go into game mode zero and we press the button we bring in the creeper and the two skeletons we're going to hit all three of them when we hit the creeper with the sword and the reason we're using a creeper is to separate the drops now you can see there that there are a lot of bones and arrows and of course it was the creeper that we hit with the looting sword and when we go and pick up these items you can see that the looting effect has been passed onto the other mobs that got killed with the sweep attack so just to make a point, we're now going to summon in a ridiculous amount of mobs here which are going to make a lot of noise. Ouch, that was loud. We get a lot of XP and a ridiculous amount of items here as well. So now we have a sword with fire aspect and I've adjusted the health of the mobs so that they will survive the first attack. The creeper gets set on fire but you can clearly see the other mobs don't. For this next trick we have a knockback sword. So pay close attention. Notice that the creeper there goes further away because there is a general knockback effect here. But there they all fall together. Let's do it again. The creeper's been set on fire. The skeletons get set on fire by the sunlight. But when we use the knockback sword, you can see the creeper goes way further back. So the effect isn't passed on to the other two mobs. So I've tested this with Sharpness, Smite and Bane of Arthropods, none of them having an effect with the sweep attack. And I think what we've seen is the same old trick with looting. When the mob dies from the player at the hands of the sweep attack, it checks what's in the hand of the player. If there's a looting sword, it affects the drops from that mob. So it's the same old trick and when it comes to all of the other enchantments, none of them work with the sweep attack. This last myth is a question of my own that I really want answered. It would appear if you mine some of the obsidian from the end and then respawn the dragon, the obsidian gets replaced. And if this is true, it would make a great place for a farm. So what we're going to do is go there, remove all of the obsidian, respawn the end dragon, and then see if it reappears. And if it does, as I said, it would make a great place for a farm. There's no lava next to the obsidian when you're mining it. It's relatively peaceful, provided that you don't look at an enderman. And of course, you can put down a beacon for haste too, so you can mine the obsidian faster. Anyway, let's head over there and let's find out. So here we are in the end. We're using the weld that I showed you earlier. And once again, using the power of MC Edit, I've just removed the obsidian and the iron bars as well. So we're going to be checking two things. But 
before we respawn the end dragon, we've got to just fly over and look at this. The obsidian goes all the way down to the very bottom of the island and into the void, which is slightly frightening. I've got to remember that next time I'm in the end mining away some obsidian. But all of it's been removed. Let's put down these end crystals. Let's respawn the ender dragon and we should see it all reappear. So I'm going to try and get a clear view of everything. And wow, that is really, really loud. Oh, and look at this. It does them one by one. So it respawns the towers one go at a time. Where are the iron bars? The iron bars have respawned. Let's look into this one as it respawns. Bam, it just instantly appears. There you go. That's fascinating stuff. Very cool. Very glad that I did this experiment. And that covers our six mini myths. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. As always, thank you so much for your support. And if this is your first time watching Myth Busting, or maybe you've only seen a couple of episodes, check out the playlist in the description box down below. Loads and loads of these episodes for you to learn lots and lots about this wonderful game. But anyway, that is it from me this episode of Myth Busting. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.